Hey guys, today we are going to start looking at factoring, specifically greatest common factor. So we'll answer the question, what is the greatest common factor and how can I factor a polynomial by GCF? So let's talk about factoring first. It is the process of rewriting a polynomial as a product of two or more polynomials, basically their factors. So if we're just talking about numerical factors, three and four would be factors of 12 since three times four equals 12. So the factors are just what multiplies to equal that number. So with polynomials, not just numerical numbers like 12, with polynomials, you need to figure out what set of variables would multiply to get you that. Okay, so like if we had 12x squared plus 6x, 2x times 6x plus 3 would equal that. If we distributed the 2x, we would get 12x squared plus 6x. So 2x times 6x plus 3 is the factored form of 12x squared plus 6x. And sometimes we will have polynomials that cannot be factored, and those are called prime. So we are gonna learn several different methods to factoring. The first one that we're gonna talk about today is greatest common factor. And this is something that you're gonna to wanna to check for on every single problem, no matter what method of factoring you are doing, okay? So greatest common factor is the greatest monomial. So one term that divides into each term in the polynomial. So the first thing that you're gonna to do to find the GCF is look at the coefficients. We're gonna determine the largest number that divides into each term. So for example, if we were finding the GCF of this, I would look at nine and 21 and ask myself, what is the greatest number that goes into nine and 21? And that would be three. So there's the coefficient of the GCF. Then we have to look at the variables. A variable must be in all terms to be a GCF. If it is present in all terms, the GCF will be the variable with the smallest exponent. So if we look at the variables in nine y to the third plus 21 y squared, I have y to the third and y squared. So I know that y is gonna be a part of the GCF. And then the smallest exponent that I see is two. So y squared would be the GCF because I can take a y squared out of y cubed and y squared. So that is how you find the GCF. And then after you have determined the GCF, we can factor by dividing each term by the GCF. If the factored, in factored form, the GCF will go in front of the parentheses and the remaining factors will be left inside the parentheses, okay? So we found the GCF, it was three y squared. So then I divide each term by three y squared. So then my factored form, make sure that you put the GCF out in front because remember the factored form should be equal to this. It's just what multiplies to get us this. So the factored form is three y squared parentheses what we got when we divided, what was left over, which was three y plus seven. And then when we distribute, we should get the same thing. So three y squared times three y is nine y cubed, so that's good, and then three y squared times seven is 21 y squared, so that's correct. Okay, let's look at number one. So the first thing I wanna do is just look at the numbers. 42 and 12 and ask myself, what is the largest number that can go into 42 and 12? And that would be six. And then this term has an X, but this one does not. So X is not gonna be a part of my GCF because the GCF has to be present in all terms. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to divide each term by the GCF of six. And when I write my factored form, it will be the GCF first, six parentheses, and then 42x divided by six is seven x, and negative 12 divided by six is negative two. So there is the factored form of 42x minus 12. And a way that we can check this is by distributing. Six times seven x is 42x, and six times negative two is negative 12, so we know we did that correctly. Okay, let's look at number two. Let's find the GCF first. So five and 30, the biggest number that goes into five and 30 is five. And then those both have an X. So I know I'm gonna have an X in my GCF and the lowest exponent would be one or just the X. So my GCF is five X. So now I'm going to divide each term by the GCF and my factored form will have the GCF in front, 5x, and then I'll put the leftovers inside the parentheses. So 5x squared divided by 5x 
is just x. And then negative 30 divided by 5x would be negative 6. And then you can check your work by distributing. And if I distributed this, I would get 5x squared minus 30x. So I know I did it correctly. Okay, let's look at number 3. So I need the largest number that's going to go into 34 and 85, which is 17. And then this term has an x and this term has a y. They don't have any common variables, so there's not going to be a variable in my GCF. My GCF is just going to be 17. So now I'm going to divide each number by 17, and I'll put my GCF out in front. And then parentheses, 34x divided by 17 would be 2x, and then 85y divided by 17 would be 5y. Okay, number four, I have three terms, but it is still the same process. I need to look at the numbers of 32, 8, and 16 and decide what is the largest factor or greatest common factor between each of those. So 32, 8, and 16, 8 can go into all of those. And then the first two terms have a variable of x, but the last term does not. So that's not going to be a part of the greatest common factor because it has to be present in all terms for it to be a part of the GCF. So now we're going to divide by 8, and I'm going to put my GCF out in front, and then the parentheses, 32x squared divided by 8 is 4x squared, and then negative 8x divided by 8 is negative x, and 16 divided by 8 is 2. Okay, number 5. First thing I need to do is figure out what goes into negative 27, negative 54, and 9. So the biggest number that goes into all of those is 9. And then they all have x's in them. So I know x is going to be a part of my GCF, and the lowest exponent is 2. So 9x squared is the GCF. So I need to divide each of these terms by a 9x squared. So I'm going to put 9x squared, parentheses, negative 27x to the fourth, divided by 9x squared would be negative 3x squared, and then negative 54x to the third divided by 9x would be negative 6x, and then 9x squared divided by 9x is 1. Make sure you don't just drop that. You need to show that there were three terms in the original polynomial. And remember also, if you distribute, you need to get the same answer. So the only way we would get the same answer as this is by putting a plus 1 there. So there is your answer. Another way you could write this is by changing the GCF to a negative because sometimes we want that A term to be positive. So another thing that you could do is make the GCF a negative 9x squared and then just change the sign of each term on the inside. So it'd be 3x squared plus 6x minus 1. Either of those would work. Okay, let's look at number six. So if you notice, my first term doesn't have a coefficient, or it has that invisible coefficient of one, and then this one has a coefficient of eight. So my GCF is not gonna have a number in it this time because there's no number larger than one um, that I can pull out from each of these terms. But I do have some common variables. So I have x's, and the lowest x exponent would be x, and then I have y's, so that's also going to be a part of the GCF. So now I'm going to divide each term by x, y, and my factored form will be x, y times x squared, y divided by x, y is just x, and then negative 8 x, y divided by x, y would be negative 8. Remember, you can always check by distributing, which I would get x squared y minus 8xy if I distributed there.
Okay, number seven. Looks like I have a lot going on here. That's okay, let's just look at it one part at a time. So we're gonna look at the coefficients first. So 24 and 36. The biggest number that can go into 24 and 36 is 12. And then I'm gonna look at my a's, a to the sixth and a to the fourth. The GCF there would be a to the fourth since that's the smallest exponent. b squared and b squared, smallest exponent there b squared, and then c and c to the third, smallest exponent would just be c. Okay, so I have my GCF, so now I'm going to divide each term by the GCF, divided by 12a to the fourth, b squared, c, and then I'm going to write my factored form first by writing the GCF, 12a to the fourth, b squared, c. Okay, now I'm going to do the division and put the leftovers in the parentheses. So, 24 divided by 12 is 2. a to the 6th divided by a to the 4th is a squared. b squared divided by b squared is 1, so that simplifies out. And c divided by c is also 1, so that simplifies out as well. So the first term inside the parentheses is just 2a squared. Okay, now let's look at the second group. Negative 36 divided by 12 is negative three. A to the fourth divided by A to the fourth simplifies out. B squared divided by B squared simplifies out. And C to the third divided by C would be C squared. And remember, you can always check it by distributing. Okay, number eight. Let's look at the coefficients first of 75 and 60. The biggest number that can go into 75 and 60 is 15. And then x squared divided by x, or x squared and x. That means I'm gonna have an x in my GCF and it'll just stay x since that is the lowest exponent. And then y to the third and y to the third means y to the third will be a part of my GCF. So I have the GCF, let's divide each term by it. So I'm going to get 15xy to the third, and now I just divide each term by that. So 75 divided by 15 is 5, and then x squared divided by x is x, and y to the third divided by y to the third simplifies out. And then 60 divided by 15 is 4, and x divided by x simplifies out, and so does y to the third divided by y to the third. All right, last one, number nine. GCF, let's start with the numbers of six, 12, and negative 48. The biggest number that can go into all of those is six. And then it looks like they all have X's and the lowest exponent would just be an X. And then Y squared, Y, Y, they all have Y's, lowest exponent is just Y. So my GCF is 6xy, so that means I'm going to divide each term by 6xy. So 6xy will go first, my GCF, and then I'll put parentheses, and now I can divide. So 6 divided by 6 will simplify out. x to the third divided by x is x squared. y squared divided by y is y. And then 12 divided by 6 is 2 x squared divided by x is x, and y divided by y simplifies out. Last term, negative 48 divided by 6 is negative 4. x divided by x simplifies out, and so does y divided by y.